Hello class, welcome to the next math lesson. We're in module three, lesson nine of eighth grade Eureka Math. This one's all about properties of similarity on pages 99 through 112 of your workbooks. Now, uh, it's kind of a, not a whole lot of notes today. It's kind of, we're doing some exploration activities together. We're going to explore and learn some properties about similarity. Uh, but the road so far is yesterday in lesson eight, we learned about how to use dilations and rigid motions to prove similarity. We use dilations and rigid motions to prove that two figures were similar. We're going to kind of build off of that today. We're going to do a lot of the same things we did yesterday in lesson eight, today in lesson nine. So if you wanted more practice with lesson eight skills, you get them in lesson nine. If you master lesson eight skills, you get a little bit of a review. But we're going to use those skills of dilations and transformations, proving similarity, to learn some things about similarity. So today we'll explore to find two properties of similarity. And after we explore for a little while, we will work on the, uh, well, we'll fill in the two properties right down the bottom of your notes. So I just have two blanks. You can leave that. But today we're just exploring properties of similarity. So it should be fun, should be a little bit creative like we did yesterday where we're just kind of problem solving and figure out how to make things line up. It's pretty good. So uh, let's begin. If you need to pause the video, go back and fill in some notes, feel free to do that so, right now. But if you do not need to pause the video and check your notes, then you can just, uh, if you've copied all your notes down already, then you're just free to keep on going with me. So let's go to page 99. And let's get started exploring a bit. Here we go. So, exploratory challenge one on page 99. The goal is to show that if triangle ABC is similar to ABC prime, then ABC prime is similar to ABC. Symbolically, if ABC is similar to the, if the original is similar to prime, then prime is similar to original. So we're just going to kind of show and prove that similarity works both ways. We can check back and forth to see if this, we can move this one to match this one, or we can move this one to match this one. We're going to see if we can work in both different directions. Should be uh, doable. Let's try it out. So first determine whether or not ABC is in fact similar to ABC prime. Before we do any work, we should check to make sure they are similar. So let's, uh, if you remember in lesson nine, what we did to prove that they are similar, we uh, checked to the, the uh, scale factor to see if the scale factor was constant in all of them. So let's check this out. Uh, we could do it just by eyesight, because if you look right here, we have A, A prime, B prime is two, and AB is four. We have AC is eight, and A prime, C prime is four, and we have BC is six, and B prime, C prime is three. If you notice, you can see that the scale factor is the same for all of them. Scale factor is the same because look at this. Four divided, four times one half makes two. Eight times one half makes four. Six times one half is three. So the scale factor for everything is one half because the original, this is the original over here, times one half makes the prime. The original times one half makes the prime. So are they similar? Yes. So we can say yes. Triangle ABC is similar, and that little wavy line means similar to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. So now we're ready to, because they are similar, we can prove it with our transformations. So let's see part B on page 100, see what they want us to prove first. So first they want us to go from 
ABC to the prime. So they want us to start with the original and go to the prime. Well, let's look at this. Let's uh, the original is over here. So for part B, they want us to start with the blue and then make the red. Start blue, make red. So that's what we're doing for part two. Let me write it down right here. Blue to red is the first thing we're doing. And you should remember from lesson eight that the first step that we always do is make the size match. We need to make the size match. So step one, to make the size match, we need to dilate. So let's look and see what we are going to dilate. Here we go. Dilate. So we need to start with the blue. Remember, start with the blue. So to make the sizes match, we need to get smaller. So we're going to dilate by one half. So we're going to multiply by one half to make this, to shrink this down to make the size match. So let's do that first. First thing we're going to do, multiply everything by one half. So let's do A and multiply by one half. So A is at negative four and six. So half of negative four is negative two and half of six is three. So we're going to, so that's where the next A is going to, that's where A is going to move to. B is at negative eight and four. Multiply by half. So half of negative eight is negative four and half of four is two. So we're going to go right there. And then C. C is at negative 6 and negative 2. So we also cut those in half. Negative 6 turns into negative 3. Negative 2 turns into negative 1. And that's this is what it's going to look like. I dilated all the coordinates. Now I am connecting the coordinates to show the triangle after the dilation. So. That was step one. So step one, I dilate, you dilate from origin by r equals one half to shrink it. It's the first thing I did, I made it shrink. Now, let me just label these letters so I know where they need to go, a, b, and c. I need to move it over here. I need to slide it over. So let me get my vector. I'm going to connect the A's. That's the vector I'm going to use to slide it over. What did the vector go? Well, let's count the units. It looks like the, the vector went up 2, 1, 2, and right 5. So that's the translation. Up 2, right 5. So we step two is we're going to translate two units up and five right. And if we do this, the triangle is actually going to look like this. So we can actually draw the triangle where it goes after the translation. There it is. So step one, step two. Now for step three, how do we make it line up again? Well, you can see like this is C, this is B, here's A. I need to spin it around. I need to rotate it so that C rotates all the way around and goes up top. So I'm just going to say we need to rotate, and I believe it's a 180 degree rotation because it's going from pointing up, down, straight down, and straight up. So it's a 180 degree rotation. So step three is rotate 180 degrees. And remember, you need a point that you rotate around. So what is staying in the same place? A is staying in the same place. So this A prime point stays. 
B will move, C will move, but A stays. So that the one we stay is the one we rotate around. Rotate around point A prime. And that will make them match. That will make them match. So I step one, I made it shrink. Step two, I translated. And step three, I rotated. Pretty good job so far. So that is how we map the blue to the red. That's how we move blue to red. Uh, let's, and so that was part B. Let's put part C. Part C says, describe the sequence of dilation followed by a congruence that proves the prime is similar to the original. So this time, we're going red to blue. We need to move red to blue this time. And remember, the first thing we do, first thing we do always is match the size. So we're going to dilate first. So let's look at our diagram to see what we're going to dilate. Okay, so this is what we have. We're starting with red and we need to move to blue. So obviously this means that we have to make the size bigger. We have to make the size bigger. We have to make the red bigger first, match the size. So what R factor are we gonna use? Well, if one half made it smaller, we need to do the inverse of it to make it bigger. So we're gonna use R equals two. So we're going to do dilate from origin by R equals two. And obviously that's gonna take us like, that's gonna take us off the page because just looking at point A of the red right here, it's at three and five, so we need to go six and 10. So point A, the new one is gonna be like right up here. But that's okay, because we know it's right up here. So this is where A is. We don't see uh, B and C, but we can find A. And knowing where A is, is kind of enough to help us. Because if we know where A is, A is right here. So step one is making the triangle bigger. We know it's very big, but we, and we also know it's up here. We know it's up here. So let step two, we need to, let's match the A's up. So this time we're going to translate so let's draw the vector that we're going to translate by. So that's the vector we're gonna follow. And this time the vector is moving down and left because we're moving the opposite direction. So it goes down one, two, three, four, and it moves left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So down four, and left 10. We can do that. So step two, we need to translate four units down and 10 left. Now if we do that, uh, let's see. The new triangle, let's try to draw the new triangle a little bit where it is after the translation. Step one was making it bigger. Step two was making it kind of like there. It's still off, C is still off the page, but we can find B. So this, step one, this is step two right here. And so you can see B is right here, A is right here, C is off the top of the graph, but you get to see where it is kind of. How do we make it line up now for the third one? How do we make this line up? Well, I think we're going to rotate again. 
And it looks to me like it'll be another 180 degree rotation around point A. We're going to make it rotate this way so that this AB lines up with this AB. So we're just going to rotate it again. So step three, we're going to rotate 180 degrees around point A. And if we do all that, we get it lined up. So three steps for both of them. Can I get all three steps on the same thing? Barely, maybe. I'll just do that. So dilate, translate, and rotate for both of them. But, it just, but what changed was the rules. For the dilation from blue to red, we dilated by one half. From red to blue, it was two. The translation was also different. And the rotation also happened in a different point. This rotation happened around this point for part, a, part B. Part C's rotation happened around this point. So the rules are different, but you can go both ways. You can, you can make blue turn into red, or you can make red turn into blue. So part D, is it true that triangle ABC is similar to triangle ABC, ABC prime? And triangle ABC prime is similar to triangle ABC. Yes, that is true. And really, it's just because similarity means the shapes match. And it does not matter. which shape you start with. So that was a little bit of an exploration activity. It does not matter which shape you start with. That is something you learned today. So you can, so if I ever show this to you again and say prove that blue and red are similar, some of you will go start with blue and make it look like red. Some of you will start with red and make it look like blue. Both ways are right. It does not matter which way that you uh, transform it. Similarity is similarity is similarity. Let's do another exploratory activity, kind of learn the same kind of concepts, only this time we're going to look at three triangles but on page 101. Page 101 has three triangles, and we're going to talk about similarity with all of them. So let's first... Uh, this time we don't have to prove that similarity is. They just tell us that they are similar. So part A, well, first let me label my triangles. Let me do three different colors. Uh, here's the original down here I'm going to do in pinkish red. The prime triangle I'm going to do in green right here. So prime is green, the original is red, pink, and let's do prime prime triangle and be in blue. So prime prime is in blue. There we go. Now, now that they're color coded, now it might be a little bit easier to think of them. So let's look at part A. Part A says. Describe the similarity that proves the original. So pink is similar to prime. Pink is similar to green. So I need to start with the pink and go to green. Well, that's easy enough. Let's do that. Let's start first. Well, first thing you'll remember is we have to start with dilation. We have to do the dilation first. So let's do dilation first. Step one, dilation to match the size. So, and because we're on a grid coordinate, let's do dilation from the origin, because that makes it a little bit easier. Now, if we're starting with, now if we need to match the size. So let's start with pink. Let's see, what does our R factor need to be? Well, if you look at BC, and you look at B prime, C prime, you see this is one, and this is three, one and three. 
Well, that's an easy math problem. You know it's growing by 3. It's getting multiplied by 3. In fact, you can check it here. AC is 3. AC prime is 9. So we're multiplying it by 3. So dilate from origin by R equals 3 because the scale factor is 3. Everything's growing by 3. Even if you're good at multiplying decimals, you know 2.1 times 3 is 6.3. So let's do that first. Let's dilate by 3. So let's do it. Let's see right here. Let's start with A. A is negative 1 and 2. Well, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So that's where we're going to put our dot for where A moves. B is at negative 3 and 1. Negative 3 times 3, because that's our scale factor, is negative 9. 1 times 3 is 3, so this is where our B is going to go. C is at negative 3 and 0. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. 0 times 3 is 0, so that's where it's going to be right there. So for this one, this... is where the triangle is for step one. So for part A, that's step one. But it's still not proven yet. They do I need remember I need the pink to turn into the green, not the pink to turn into the brown. So I need another step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have to slide it up to make it line up. So I just like using A because A is the first letter of the alphabet. So I'm just going to draw my vector right there. That's the vector I'm going to use. So what does the vector do? Well, it slot the shape, the brown shape is going, this is step two, by the way, I'm going to translate up. Slide up one, two, three, four, five units. Do I go left or right? No, I just go straight up. So step two, translate up five units. And that lines it up perfectly. You can even check if you like. If you don't believe me, we can check with our transparency. I trace it. I trace my vector. I slide straight up. Bingo lines up perfectly. There we go. So that is how the pink moves on to the green. First, I grow it with my scale factor, and then I translate, slide it up using the vector up five units. Step one, step two, easy enough. Hopefully you're following along. You just have to visualize, make a plan for what you wanna do. So it'll probably help you if you start by using pencil maybe to test it and use your transparency to test it, but just have a plan. So that's have a plan, see if it works, try it out, experiment, trial and error, just focus and do your best. Page 102, part B says, describe the similarity that proves prime is similar to prime prime. So remember our prime was green, our prime prime was blue. So prime is green, prime prime is blue. So now I need to go from green to blue. So start with green, go to blue. This time, and remember, first thing we always do is dilate to match size. And this time I'm going to do my work in orange. You can see for part A, it was in the brown pen. For part B, I'm going to do it, do it in orange so that my drawing is a little bit more organized. So let's see right here. How, first, I need to change size, and I'm going from green to blue. Let's look at this. Well, let's look at CB. Starts, it's over here it's three, over here it's two. So what scale factor, so the green is bigger than the blue, so I need to shrink it. I need to do, to do this, I need to do R times the green, R times the green 
to equal the blue because I'm shrinking. R times the green to equal the blue. So let's figure out what this just might be. R times the green to equal the blue. So let's try it out. Uh, R we don't know. We're looking for the scale factor. But I know just pick a side that you want to do. Just pick any side you want. I'm going to pick uh, CB. So the green CB is 3. And the blue CB is 2. So now it's algebra. I need to divide by 3 on both sides. Because 3 divided by 3 makes 1. And R times 1 is R. So I do 2 divided by 3. So now I know R is 2 thirds for, and this is important, for part B, R is 2 thirds. So I found the scale factor. So I need to shrink the green by multiplying everything by 2 thirds. So I'm going to dilate from the origin by R equals 2 thirds. And this is where your math facts come in handy because when we dilate by a fraction, it really helps if you know your math facts. So let's uh, dilate the green triangle, multiplying by 2 thirds for our first step to make the blue. So let's start with A. A is at 3, 11. So 3 times 2 thirds is 2. 11 times 2 thirds, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because 11 times 2 thirds is going to be uh, 7 and 1 third. So we need to go to 2, right down, negative 2, right down here. I don't know if you can see my finger. Here we go. Negative 2. And we need to do 2 thirds times 11, which I just said was. Uh, 7 and 1 third. So we go 7 and 1, negative 2 and 7 and 1 third. Right there. Now over here, B is negative 9 and 8. Negative 9 times 2 thirds is 6. 8 times 2 thirds is uh, 5 and 1 third. So I need to go 5 and one third, which is right about there. C is negative nine and five. So negative nine times two thirds is negative six. Five times two thirds is three and one third. So it goes about right there. So now I can connect this. And that will show you where after, after the dilation, I get step one. That is where that goes for part B, step one. Doing pretty well, I think. I think it's going pretty well because if you look, the orange and the blue are now the same size. So I have the same size. Now I just need to do my rigid motions to make them line up. And because they're in two different places, remember, I always, usually because they're apart from each other, I like to slide them so that they're connected. And specifically, I'm going to slide it so that the A's connect because that looks like it's the easiest path to me. So that's my vector right there to slide it over. So I'm going to slide it over down here. And you have to figure out how many over. Well, let's see here. It went down and right. Well, how many did it go down? It went one, two, three, and remember this was one third. So one third, one and one third, two and one third, three and one third. So down three and one third. So step two, I translate three and one third units down. Translate three and one third units down. And I also moved one, two, three, four, five units right. Three and a half units down and five right. 
So you dilate to make the sizes match, multiply by two thirds. You translate to line up one of the points to get them close to each other. And then let me draw them close to each other so that you can see this. Uh, let's see, this is going to be, let's see, it goes two units down and four units over. So it's gonna be right there and right there. So this, after the translation, step two, can see our, our grid is getting a little bit crowded. That's why I use different colors. So after step one, after I made the sizes match, it's here. After the translation, step two is right there. See how that works? Not bad, not bad. Now, if you look, I still need to, so the green got shrunk in step one to be the same size. Translated to move closer, and the reason I translate this is because I know that if I translate it and the points are touching, I can rotate it to make it line up. And I can even show you this on my trade with my transparency, how I can rotate it to make the points line up. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I've been doing this for years, and so I I can tell these things in my head. Might help if you get your transparency out to test these things. So I know that if I just rotate it like this, it lines up. I know that after I shrunk it, it looked like that. I'm going to slide it over. And then I'm going to spin it up, and it looks just like that. Uh, now, you might want to put it. Now, you could say just rotate it, but it's actually quite easy to tell how many degrees you rotate it like this. What you do is because I know I know because this is 90 degrees because watch this I draw an X exactly on the grid lines and I just rotate it and I spin it one box so watch this is going to be our first box watch where it moves after when I spin it to make it line up See the box is up here, and then it moves just down one box. That means it just moved one spot. It was in this corner, now it's in this corner. That's just a 90 degree rotation because I moved one L shape. And I moved like a clock. When I spun it, I moved like a clock. Like, cause clocks move this way. So when you tell me the definition of your rotation, which you should do, step three, you're going to rotate, and it was one L shape, which I said is 90 degrees, around, oh, 90 degrees clockwise, like a clock, around point A prime prime. That was the rotation. And if you do that rotation, you can you figure out how you can um, line up the triangles exactly. You dilate to match the size, you translate to get points to line up, and then you rotate to line them up exactly. Let me show you again. Step one, we turned the green smaller. Step two, we made it slide over here. And step three, we rotated it up. Lots of fun stuff. A little bit confusing, but we're getting to it. You, we'll, we're figuring it out. Okay. Uh, got a little bit more to do. Don't worry about it. So that was a three-step. For part C, uh, I'm just going to tell you they're similar. We don't need to verify right now. But we're going to describe the sequence that would prove the original is prime prime. So this time we're going to do red is the original and the prime prime is blue. So this time we need a third one. We're going to go from red to blue. We did for part A, red to gr green. Then for part B, we did green to blue. Now for part C, we're doing red to blue.
Okay, let's prove it. First thing we need to do, remember, first thing we do, I need another color. Let's do red. We need, first thing we need to do is dilate, match the size. So remember, we're starting with red. So let's look at red and how do we match the size to the blue? Well, I'm remember, I'm looking at BC. BC here is one, BC here is two. So that is actually an easy R factor because one times two makes two, three times two makes six, and 2.1 times two is 4.2. So for part C, the R factor is just two. So the R factor is two. One times two makes two. So for part, for the first thing, dilate triangle ABC from origin by R equals two. You're just using the scale factor of two because we're making the size match first. Always important to make the size match first. So let me sketch out what that looks like on the graph. Let's dilate on the graph so you can see. So here's the pink. We need to multiply by two to make the size match the blue. Remember, pink and blue. We don't care about green anymore. We don't care about the brown or the orange. That was old work. We just care about red and blue right now. So A is negative one, two, and our R factor is two. So negative one times two is negative two. Two times two is four. So that's where A is going to move. B is negative three and one. And remember, we multiply by two. So negative three times two is six. One times two is two. So that's where B is. C is negative three, zero. Negative three times two is six. Zero times two is zero. So that is where C goes. So for part C, after we use our scale factor, the triangle grows and is sitting right there, sitting pretty right there after step one of part C. But I'm not done yet because I still want to move it over to blue. Remember, for part C, red to blue. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, it doesn't look like a reflection. It looks like I need to rotate to make it line up, with, to make the red and the blue line up. But let me start by translating it over here to make them closer together. So that is step two my translation. So if you look, my translation, what vector did I follow? The vector went up nothing, down nothing, but it did go right one, two, three, four, five units. So for step two, I'm going to translate five units right. Now, actually, something funny works here because if you look at the orange for part B, I'm going to tell you right now, when I move this five units right, I line up exactly with where I was for right here on the part B. It lines up exactly right here. So I can put a two, I can put another red two right here also because it moves to the exact same place, which means to make, to make the line up with blue, I also rotate just like I did for number for the orange also. The rotation is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to do just what I did here. Rotate 90 degrees clockwise around point A prime prime. Same exact finish move. Same exact finishing move. The dilation was different. The translation was different. But I get to the same place. I get to the same place. In fact, you should. What they want you to know from this is that all the triangles we draw on drew on this graph, they are all similar. Similar is similar is similar. It does not matter where they are does not matter what size they are, similar is similar is similar is similar is similar is similar is similar. All of these are similar.
They're just in different locations and different sizes, but they are all similar. And that's kind of the answer to uh, part D right here. Is it true that if the original is similar to the prime and the prime is similar to the prime prime, then the, then the original is similar to the prime prime? Yes. And here's really how mathematicians say this. Yes, this is true. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. A is B and B is C, then A is C. That is what we call the transitive property. It's called the transitive property. Uh, if you think of it like money, uh, think about like, uh, what can we talk about? Let's talk about like uh, 10 cents. If two nickels equals 10 cents and 10 cents equals five pennies, then two nickels equals 10 pennies. If two nickels equals 10 cents and 10 cents equals 10 pennies, then two nickels equals 10 pennies. In other words, we just have three things that are all equal. A and B are equal, B and C are equal, so that means A and C are automatically equal. So it works for similarity also. It works for similarity also. So A is similar to B, and B is similar to C, then A is similar to C. Similar is similar is similar is similar. It, that's all that uh, they wanted you to know today. Similar is similar, does not matter. It is the transitive property of similarity. So it works for equals, it also works for similarity. And in fact, that is one of the properties that we're going to add to the notes that we did. So if you go back to your notes real quick, uh, we're just gonna do transitive. property. That's your vocabulary word for today, transitive property. And I'll just write, if A is similar to B and B is similar to C, then A is similar to C. It just shows you connections between similarity. It just similar is similar is similar is similar. It's all just connections. This is a property. So write that down. Maybe take a minute, pause your video if you want to. And then when you come back, we're going to talk about the problem set. Make sure your notes are all caught up. Make sure your answers for the examples are all caught up. And we'll come back and unpause the video when you're ready to talk about your uh, problem set because we're going to do our second property after we talk about the problem set. So take a little pause, take a little break, come back when you're ready and we'll talk about this. Okay, so hopefully you took a little bit of break, paused your video a minute. Here's the lesson summary. It just says similarity is a symmetric relation. It means if one figure, then it goes back and forth. And then it also says your vocabulary word similarity is transitive, which we talked about in your notes. Uh, looking at, oh, there's the exit ticket, which I'll let you work on on your own in a few minutes. I'll talk about that after we talk about the problem set. Let me just try to slide it to the back of my packet. Here's the homework helper. If you want to see, again, the homework helpers are, of course, as their name implies, very helpful. You have the problem, you have the answers, and you, t and you have what they did to think about it. 
But let's look at the problem set on page 109. Because they didn't really talk about this in the example, so I want to do uh, one of these with you. I want to do number one with you, and then you could do number two on page 110 on your own. Uh, but let's look. Uh, number one in the problem set. Would a dilation alone be enough to show that similarity is symmetric? So can you just use a dilation to prove similarity? So would a dilation alone prove similarity? Does a dilation by itself, here's what it's asking, does dilation by itself prove similarity? This is their, this is their big question. Well, for part A, this time, yes, it will. This time, yes. Because all the points are aligned with a center. All, all the points are aligned with the center. If you look, here is the center, and the original is lined up with the prime here. The original is lined up with the prime here, and the original is lined up with the prime here. So the points are lined up on centers. In fact, you can see you can follow the rays. The rays you can draw rays connecting the original with the prime. You can draw those rays. So this time, yes, dilation is enough. What about this time? Is a dilation enough this time? Is a dilation enough this time? Uh, well, let's try it. Let's uh, draw, let's connect the primes and see if we can find the center. If we can find a center of dilation, and if the center, if there's a center, then it works. Let's see. The a, that's connecting the A's. Let's connect the B's. Let's connect the C's. Uh, no, not really. Because there's no center, they don't hit a point over here, and they don't hit a point together over here. Is the dilation enough? No. You cannot locate the center of these. And the reason you can't is because this was a dilation and another transformation. There was a dilation with another movement, another motion. There was a dilation, a translation, and a rotation. So there was all kinds of things right here. If you look at part A, this is only a dilation. So it works if there is only a dilation. But this was a dilation plus other stuff. So it does not work with dilations and other stuff. So C, in general, is dilation enough to prove similarity? And the answer really is no. Because other rigid motions require more proof. Rigid motions require more proof, not other rigid motions, because rigid motions require more proof, because rigid motions change things. So if there's only dilations, yeah, fine. But if there's something else, it does not work. In fact, that is the other uh, property, the other fact we're learning today in your notes. Number two, dilations are not 
always enough to prove similarity on their own. Dilations are not enough to prove similarity on their own. Not always. Sometimes yes, but not always. You have to do other rigid motions to help you prove, which you knew already because in lessons eight and nine, we were using other rigid motions to prove similarity, not just dilations. So sometimes dilations are enough, but most of the time they're not. Just like lessons eight and nine, they were not enough. So those are the two properties. Write them down positively if you need to take more time. And that is the first problem on your problem set. Problem two on the problem set, page one, I'm sorry, page 110 is still asking, would it, is still the same thing. Is a dilation enough for this one? Just like number one, part A, is a dilation enough for this example? But for, no, for on page 111, would a dilation be enough to prove this similarity? Would a dilation be enough? And then part C, summarize, is a dilation enough? So part number two on your problem set is just like number one with just different examples. And then number three on your problem set, uh, they're asking, are they similar? And so they want you to prove right here. Let's uh, let me color code it for you. Let's say this one is red or pink. Sorry. Then we'll do blue right here, and we'll do green for this one, just so that you get color coded, and so that's a little bit easier maybe for you to understand the question. So it's saying right here that green is similar to blue and blue is similar to pink. And it's asking, is green similar to pink? So this is asking you to prove the transitive property of similarity. Prove the transitive property. So blue and green, green and blue are similar. Blue and pink are similar. Prove green and pink. So that's what you need to do. You need to go describe the dilation first. So you, they want you to go green to pink. You can do it just like we did in the work today. And then exit ticket, page 105, the thing you're going to turn in. After you do your uh, problem set and you check your work with mine, because my answers will be on the Google Classroom, try the uh, exit ticket. Take a picture of your exit ticket when you're done. Turn it in on the Google Classroom. OK, for your exit ticket on page 105, what you're going to do for number one, which two triangles, if any, have similarity that is symmetric? Which means uh, give me two triangles that are similar to each other. Just describe a similar relationship between two triangles. So pick two tri so find at least two triangles in there that are similar to each other. Just directly with each other. Two triangles that are connected directly. For number th two, which three triangles have a transitive similarity? Which means I want you to explain a transitive uh, relationship. So for number two, you're just going to say triangle blank is similar to triangle blank. For number two, you're going to say triangle blank is similar to this, and that is similar to this, so this is similar to this. So let the, it's uh, we can do color coding. Red is similar to this, and blue is similar to. So here we go. You're going to fill in this kind of blank right here. Red is similar to blue, and blue is similar to green, so red is similar to green. So you're going to find three triangles, red, green, and blue, and talk about how they are similar using the transitive property. So for number one, you're just going to pick two triangles that are similar. Number two, you're going to pick three that are similar and write it in transitive style. 
So have fun with that. You can always uh, go back and look at your notes. And remember, if you're stuck on anything, ask me for help. And I will talk you through it. I will show you how to do it. I will help you with whatever you need. Have fun with this. Be creative. Be precise. Stay focused. And I will see you on the next lesson.